Before I remove this mixer circuit board from this part of the plastic case and otherwise strip down and clean this, I thought I would do a quick visual inspection of channel 2 where we had the problems to see if I could see a broken solder joint. So I was looking along here. What I'd be looking for is, say, the likes of there, the, a sort of thin line, and then if you reached underneath and sort of pressed against the component, then maybe you could actually see a physical break and that would occur where someone had put too much pressure onto the component when they were using the fader or something. Actually, I looked all across here and I couldn't see anything. I figured because I couldn't see anything, then I would send a test signal into the input and try and find where the signal stops. I don't have the schematics for these. Schematics, schematics. How does one say that? But I've looked at the schematics for enough other task arms and I've got some sort of familiarity of what to expect here. Using an audio probe means that I'm going to have to get power from this board to this board, which means I'm going to need to have the system turned on. I don't need to have any of the signals attached because I'm only tracing the audio within this board. But I should say as a kind of safety thing and a disclaimer thing, I'm not actually an electrical engineer. I don't have like a degree or anything in this. probably know a bit more about electronics than a guy in the street. My advice, which is not officially stamp safety advice, is that with this unit, because there's an external DC, the electricity as it reaches here should be of a sufficiently low voltage and current that it doesn't pose any danger to you so touching anything in here you shouldn't get an electrical shock but if you're at all worried about it you can get rubberized gloves which you would you know kind of wear as a matter of course if you're dealing with a really high voltage or high current situation like opening up a guitar amp but we're not really dealing with the same safety concerns here now, i'll briefly talk to you about the cheap and uh, unsophisticated test gear we're using here. This is an audio probe I fashioned myself. I copied how to make this from some instructions online and it consists of an old test probe for a multimeter. This is connected to the positive and it's this that you'll be touching different points of the circuit with. It's going through an electrolytic that is polarized capacitor and then your negative end of it is attached to a little crocodile clip. You hear how when I took that off there the buzz got louder. The buzz is this guitar cable connected to this jack socket that's going into um, a little practice amp just off screen. A little bit of electricity theory for you, which explains the reason for the capacitor. You've got two kinds of electrical current. One is direct current. If you imagine that electrons in a wire are like little balls in a pipe, direct current is all of them going in the same direction. Whereas alternating current is that you've got those balls in the pipe, but they're moving back and forth at varying speeds and intensity and the change in moving from positive to negative that's what's analogous to the sound signal so anything that's an audio signal is going to be ac whereas your power anywhere in this circuit is going to be dc so the thing about a capacitor is that it lets ac signal go past so like your audio signal will get into this guitar lead and go to your little guitar amplifier whereas if you happened to touch this against um, one of the power rails in here, so part of the, the bit of the circuit that's getting energy to the different components so they can do their job. You might hear a little click, you're not going to get any sound coming through there. If there's any, any real electrical engineers listening to this, feel free to jump into the comments and give me a power of shite for my awful, awful explanation. But I think for most DIYers who are looking to do this kind of thing themselves, I hope that's an adequate explanation. Check the comments. If there's anything wrong about what I've said, we'll establish it there. Right, for feeding uh, an audio signal into the mixer, I'm using this Behringer CT200 cable tester because it's got a tone test facility on it. It'll send a, a sine wave, maybe a 1000 hertz signal. Anyway, it's coming out of this cable. You could use a cheap signal generator, um, but what's convenient about this is that it runs off a battery, um, so I don't need to plug another power supply in when I'm doing this. Um, I don't need to have any kind of like conversion of the output into an audio cable. It's already got a jack output and an XLR output on it. It's a handy thing for a musician to have anyway because it tests cables. So the approach that I'm taking to this is I'm getting a working channel and I'm feeding the signal through it and what I want to do is without a schematic and without having removed the mixer from this plastic casing I don't know exactly which of these solder tabs relate to which component. 
And although the layout of the printed circuit board is somewhat pragmatic and there's, you know, all these kind of like labyrinthine patterns on it, because the controls are laid out in strips, then the signal flow to an extent is going from up here down here. So what I want to establish is a point where I can find a clear signal up there and one up there. And then I want to find somewhere about halfway in between. Then I want to split those and find somewhere halfway in between and then split those and find some halfway in between. So I've got a series of points going from the input down to the fader where I know on a healthy channel I can get a clear signal out of this using the audio probe. Then when I move on to the mixer channel that has a problem, I can try and find the corresponding points because although they're not absolutely identical, you can probably see from here, there's a lot of similarity in these four strips corresponding to the first four channels. So I already did this uh, um, with channel one, went through it and found, I will demonstrate in a second, but I found some points where I'm getting a clear signal. Here you can see I've marked them with a red sharpie. When I go onto the neighboring channel, this will be channel two, this is channel one. They're not absolutely identical in their pattern. But you can see that these are broadly similar constellations, if you like, of wiring. You see how there's a long line? That bottom one, I, I was getting a clear signal there. So in this channel, I'm pretty sure that these lines will be an identical component doing the same job, but for channel two instead of channel one. So I could put my probe on that point there and expect to get a clear signal. And so when I come to this channel, I'll be going, you know, testing... Um, that one with a red marker, that one with a red marker. So does it get into the, does the signal get into the channel? Does it get out? Is it present in the middle? And so I can sort of like keep on halving down my search. And then when I find the area, I can make another mark. And then when I get this out, I can see which components are on the other side of the circuit board. You know, maybe there's a break in one of the wires on the other side. Even if I can't see exactly what's wrong with it, I'll maybe hook out that component. You know, I've got a spare board for this and put in the component from a channel that I know works. In fact, a lot of these components, you can get it from a wholesale electrical supplier, unless it's a proprietary integrated circuit. I mean, if you broke that guy there, you'd probably need a donor task app to get it. But a lot of these um, pots, you know, certainly things like capacitors and switches, you can get replacements pretty easily. Okay, so let's do this. I'll turn on this signal tester. To make sure that this is working, then what I would do is I would touch this to the negative sleeve and that to the positive sleeve. There you can hear, I'm getting a loud clear signal. I'm just doing this because sometimes like the cable between the audio tester to the practice amp or the there's a problem with this cable so you want to check before you start pulling your hair out about the circuit you're working on that those variables are okay. I'll plug this into channel one. In advance I have um, set up these two channels, channel one which I know works, channel two which seems to have a problem so that they're in mic slash line input mode, the trims are down, um, all the EQ set to neutral and the faders are all the way up. Attach my uh, the negative crocodile clip of my homemade audio probe to this heat sink which is functioning as earth. Kind of rule of thumb for you as well, you see how these um, large tabs are sunk into the large bright areas? That's the main way that these pots are secured into the circuit board, but they also connect it to earth. So usually if you've got a circuit where the components are arranged in a strip, usually the circuit boards are laid out so that all the power is on the same side as the earth's. So I'm concentrating more on points on the upper part of this area and more likely to get signal there. So I would be trying to find touching things here and then right there we go and I'd mark that and I'd come down this end. I know that's roughly the end of the fader so until I find that point I would mark it and then I'd look somewhere in the middle so I'd be touching points until I find somewhere I'm like okay I'll mark that and I find place halfway between those two mark that and so on I'm halfing it down to a point where like now I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine points along this circuit where on a healthy channel I should be able to find the input signal then what I'm doing taking socket out and putting it in channel two and then I'm looking for similarities. There's a little kind of group of three points here that's the bottom of this mono jack socket, obviously. So the next one along I know is going to be 
channel two and sure enough the signal is getting in well what about down here at the other end of the fader have i got a signal there these areas are very similar to each other so i can pretty much go there and know that's the right place nothing pick a point in the middle So I'm fine here. Mark that with green. That establishes for me that I want to be looking here-ish once I get this out of the plastic case. We'll see what we can see once this is out.